Good afternoon, E39 Source. It is March 11th, and I am going to replace my headliner today. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get in your car. Pretty easy for anyone with keys. The step after that is pretty simple as well. You're going to retract your sunroof roughly two inches. The next step is to remove the two bump stop screws. One located right here, and one located right on the other side at the exact same location. Once you get those screws out, you can go ahead, close your sunroof, and then hit the tilt button for maybe like one or two seconds. Get it so it tilts up maybe an inch. Now what you'll see is your sunroof slightly open. What you're going to do is you're going to grip this little rubber gator here and pull toward you, pull toward you here, pull toward you here. To get the gator down, what you're going to need to do is pull toward you and then down. Um, do not pull straight down or you will rip the gator because it doesn't come out like that. It has a little notch here that needs to seat in and you need to pull it toward the center of the car. Now, you'll be greeted by two screws up here. These two screws are going to be T25 screws just as the bump stop ones are and then you are going to slide your gator back and you will be greeted by one more screw right up front. Next, you are going to want to repeat the exact same process on the driver's side. Once you get all six screws out, you're going to want to stick your hand underneath the glass, hopefully it's strong enough, pull it up and toward the back, and remove it from the vehicle. Alright, once you get the glass out of the car, it should look something very much like this. What you're going to want to do is make sure you have all six of your screws. The glass will weigh roughly 22 to 23 pounds. Go ahead, stick that somewhere that it's not going to get damaged. I went ahead and stuck it in my house. So what you're going to want to do now is you are going to want to get back into your car and put the sunroof down. The next step, once you remove your glass, um, tilt the sunroof down, push it the whole way back, and then push your slider back with your hand right here. You're going to see all your screws to remove the headliner right around here. There are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 screws are on the edge of your headliner. Go ahead and remove these screws. And you can go ahead and drop your headliner after we remove everything else inside the car. You can go ahead and start removing your headliner by removing both visors. I do not have a driver's side visor right now. And removing this center dome light as well as the home link trim panel right here. To get the dome light and the home link piece out, you're going to work on the dome light first. What you're going to do is pull straight down. There's a clip right here. There's a clip right here. Just pull um, on one side first. I always usually do this side. Um, pull down on that side till you see it start to come out and you can grip it from the middle. Pull it down. The dome light's actually two pieces. A plate on the bottom and a bracket on the top. If the plate pulls off the bracket, which it can, they come apart for cleaning, um, you're going to want to make sure that you grip the bracket on the top, not the plate on the bottom. And then to get the home link piece out, you're going to slide it forward and down and it'll fall right out. To get your sun visors off, what you're going to want to do is pull down on this little plastic bracket right here, little cover that covers these screws. You're going to need a small pry tool. Just stick it right up here and pry down. As you can see, there are small clips right here, here, and there's one on the back corner. This will come right off. It takes about four to five pounds of force and then it'll That'll come right off revealing these torque screws. Go ahead, take those out, and remove your visors. You can also remove the little clip covers from here and remove the screws holding these in. The next step is to remove these two visor lights right over here. What you're going to do is just take a pry tool or even your hands like this. Pull it down just like this. Go ahead, unplug it, and remove from the vehicle. The next step is to remove all four pull-down handles. What you're going to want to do is pull them down and take two torque screws out. One here, one here, and do that for all four of them. The next step is to go ahead and remove your C-pillar lights. What you're going to want to do is pry them out with a plastic pry tool and then unplug them. To get the C-pillars out, what you're going to need to do is remove two bolts. One here, one on the back end. Pull the C-pillar toward you, up and out. Once you remove that, it will look like this, and it is free to move back and forth. That shows you the bottom of your B-pillar. What you're going to need to do is um, pop these two plugs out at the bottom. Just stick a screwdriver underneath them and pry right in through here somewhere. There's enough pressure here, you're not going to damage anything. Go ahead, 
pop those clips out and then the bottom of the top of your B pillar will be free to move around. Now what you need to do once you get both of those out and the bottom of your B pillar can move around, you can go ahead up to the top here. Push this weather stripping onto the back of the B pillar and you can pull the B pillar down. There are two clips up here that just clip into a um, shelf up here and you just need to pull this down and then it'll be free to move around. We don't need to push these the whole way down. You can go ahead, push this, just slide this down to here and it will give you more than enough room up here to play with your headliner. The next step is to remove your A pillars. What you're going to want to do is stick your fingernail underneath this little HPS logo right here, lift up just like that, remove, and that shows you a Torx bit. Go ahead, remove that, then pull the A-pillar just like this, up and back, and remove it from the vehicle. After you get your A-pillars out, the next step is to go ahead and remove your alarm system motion sensor. What you're going to do is just pull down on this, just pull down one side, then pull down the other, and then it will just simply unplug. Now we are ready to go up to the roof of our car and unscrew all of those, I believe it was 14 Torx screws around the outside, then the headliner should be ready to pull out. This is what it looks like from inside the vehicle once all of your components are removed. Once you remove all the screws around the top, your headliner should now be loose. Go ahead, reach inside your car, pull it down, and pull it out through one of your passenger rear doors. Once you get your headliner down, keep note that there are going to be a few places that it is glued. Go ahead, pull on that maybe with a pound of force it'll come right down and right underneath the mirror just be careful it hooks in there uh, a few wires run through it but it is cut in like a half moon shape it'll it'll come right out of there so the next step once you get your headliner down like this is to push your seats back um, just lower the backs down so you obviously have more room to move the headliner around inside the car once you take your headliner out, to get your slider in and out of your car, you're going to need to simply remove the rubber gaiters that are right here. You can go ahead, push them in toward the center of the car, and up, they'll pop right out. Just be careful with them, they cost a good bit for each part. And then you can go ahead and unscrew these screws right here. Now, I've already removed my old slider. Basically, you just um, take these out, they could just come out like that, and uh, then pull the slider out through the front. Um, it'll pop right out. It, it might take about a minute or two to figure out how it all works, but this sunroof assembly is very, very logical. Just uh, look at it, take your time, figure out how everything works. Now, as you can see by the black Alcantara here, this is my new slider. So I'm going to go ahead, insert my screws back into my holes, and bolt this puppy in. Put the corresponding gator on the corresponding side, and um, Go ahead, stick it right in here. Um, you'll see how it kind of fits in with the slider, and you will need to push it in on an angle into these two little clips right here. Uh, when you clip it into those, it'll slide back. You can go ahead, put this right in here, and it makes sense right in here. We'll stop, screw, put the screw in, and uh, your gator will be in place. Once you get your gators in, it should look like this, and the sunroof slider should function normally from the inside of the car. Now, they should be able to do this, you should be able to get to all this, and this is what it should look like. So there you go, now you know. Um, so let's move on to the next step, which is working in the interior. We now need to prep our headliner, and that means removing all unnecessary items, such as these lights up here and the central alarm system. Once it is a bare headliner with all of its holes exposed, we are going to walk it into the garage. We are going to put it in the car through the passenger side door. When you load it in the car, you're going to want to make sure that it is facing this direction. Turn it over like that, and then uh, load it in that way. And then obviously tilt it up and get it in there when you do. Now, I'm not going to be able to film while doing the um, preliminary installation of the headliner. What I will need to do is once I put it in the car, I will need to lift it up, um, tuck all the wires in, do the, do the back ones the best I can, um, and what I need to do is get all the wires through all the corresponding holes and then hold it up and tuck the rubber stripping for the doors um, around the edge of the headliner, tuck that up around the corners of the headliner to hold it in place in the car. 
If you don't do that, it'll fall. There's no way you can keep it up without doing that. So I will need to do all this at one time, and I hope I can do it. It's a very huge pain in the ass. Most people actually have a helper for this. I don't. So I'll just do my best and see what I can get done. All right, when you're installing your headliner, it's going to take you about 20 minutes. It's a huge pain in the ass. What I had to do was I had to move the headliner in through this door, go up on the center console, spread eagle, and reach around like a monkey and tuck in all these seams. And trust me, it, it is a uh, test of endurance to see how long you can keep your arms in the air holding this headliner up. But I got it in, and uh, then once you get it in, you're going to slide it the whole way back. Um, about an inch overhanging on the window, it'll slide back like that. Um, and then you've got to slide it forward while pushing up on the back. That'll clip the back in. And uh, now the back is clipped in, you can see it doesn't move around. And uh, it still has a little play in here, and we are going to about fix that by putting in all of our screws up here. We just have to screw in all the screws we removed, taking this out, and then it'll take a lot of play out of the headliner. Once you have it this far, with the slider completely installed, your gaiters in, the headliner in, screws around the headliner holding it in. You can go ahead and start to install some of the interior components, such as your alarm sensor, um, some of the lights up here, your visors, and uh, a few of these handles in here. You can also start to install your C, B, and A pillars. I don't need to walk you through this. It is basically the exact opposite of how we remove them. It's very, very straightforward, except I am going to give you one tip about the A pillars. When you are wrapping the A-pillars in, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to do a wrapping motion around here. You will not get it in um, and clipped in to the outside edge of this door panel unless you do that wrapping motion. So when you're sticking it in, push it down toward the dashboard, um, wrap it toward you, like wrap it out toward this way, out toward the side of the car, and then tuck it in behind here. It'll clip. It'll clip in here. You'll hear it click and then wrap it back around and it'll click in again then you put your screw in that is how you get the A pillars in a lot of people can't figure that out so there you go that's how you do it and uh, I'm going to start to install some of my interior components um, everything is pretty straightforward in here and uh, after that we will move on to the sunroof now once you get everything installed depending on what color headliner you have it'll look something like that Check that out. So, now what we have to do is we have to work on our sunroof. Right, so rather than show you each step as I was retrying to figure it out, I'm going to explain now what you need to do. As you can see, my sunroof is completely installed into the car and lined up and working completely. Now, this is what you need to do, and you need to listen to this and be careful when you're doing this. What you need to do is you need to make sure everything is installed in the sunroof cassette the way it was when you removed the glass. Now. What you need to do is you need to lay the glass in and line up the first two little arms here. One here, one over there. When you line those up, there are going to be a little pin on each arm. What you have to do is you have to push that pin in while you're putting the glass in. This would be much easier with two people. I did it with one. Push those pins in, and then you will see two screws. One here, one there. They are the same screws that we obviously took out. Now, when you take those screws out, take note of where they are in those little arms. Put them back into the same place when removing. Now, what you need to do after you get that in, you need to come to the back of the sunroof. You need to push it forward um, as far as it'll go. Be careful, don't break the arms, but push it forward as far as it'll go. It should line up with this edge. Now, when it's obviously in the raised position, you can go ahead, slide your gaiters forward, and you can come to the back screws, and they aren't going to perfectly line up. Don't freak out. What you need to do now is you need to take a tiny screwdriver of some sort and pry them into place. Just be very careful. This stuff, it takes a little bit of effort to break, but it can be broken, as anything can on this car. Just take your time, be very careful, just kind of push them into place. They will move around a little bit, the sunroof will move around a little bit, the whole thing kind of moves a little bit. It's all, it's all very mechanically oriented. And if you step back and look at this for a few hours, you can figure out exactly how it works. Now, you can go ahead and put the front two screws in. Then you are going to um, want to push the sunroof the whole way up in the air as far as it'll go. Don't, don't push with like 50 pounds of force, but push with a few pounds of force. Um, obviously, counteract gravity and then push a little bit more to push it up in the air. And then put the back two screws in. Now, when you do that, and then put it back down to see how far off it is. 
Um, it should line up and it should go into the hole and it should work. But it'll probably be raised up in the air a little bit, either on the back or the front or in the middle, actually. Then what you need to do is you need to spend about 20 minutes to a half an hour fine-tuning the fitment of the sunroof. Yes, if you want it perfect, you will need to spend a good amount of time working on this. Um, I did, and as you can see, mine is pretty much perfect. It was pretty much the way it was from BMW factory. And if you want that, you're going to need to work for it. So, what you need to basically do is just loosen the screws on each side. And you can actually do it side by side if you want. It's much easier unless you have a really major thing you need to fix. Um, if it's just fine tuning, go ahead, just do one side at a time. You can take your time and make sure it's right. Um, but you're going to need to loosen the screws, push it down or push it up depending on which way it needs to go, tighten the screws, actuate the sunroof, and uh, see where it is when you put it back down into the car. You are going to need to play with this a lot, but when you are done, you are going to have a perfect sunroof and a uh, perfect headliner reinstall. Being inside the car, you can see that the headliner is now full Alcantara, and mind you, it looks very, very nice. You can see I changed the visors out and uh, changed all the dome lights out there. I changed everything in here but the B, the C pillars, and the deck. Those will come in the future, and uh, everything else is new. You can see. Alcantara, and uh, here's our sunroof, it's perfect. So there you go, that's how you replace the headliner in an E39. Whether you just need to take your sunroof to set out to repair something in the sunroof, or you want to replace your headliner, make it black, make it Alcantara, make it just a replacement tan piece because you screwed yours up. It's not that huge of a job, it is an undertaking though, and make sure you give many, many hours to doing this. As anything in this car, if you want to do it right, it's going to take some time. and. Uh, you're going to have to work your ass off to get there. But when you do, when you do, it'll look very, very nice. It'll also make you all happy to know that the car is clean. See you in the next one.